rate limiting based on the client's IP address in Nginx web server. That's what we're going to see in this video. If you want to learn more, stick with me. Hello and what's up guys, Medium Guy here and in this video we're going to see how to put rate limit rules to clients requests based on their IP addresses. So we'll implement this in Nginx as a Docker container. So right before I jump to the content, please don't forget to watch other videos on this playlist where I've described all cool features that Nginx provides to us, like IP restrictions, bot detections and custom logs and HTTP logs and stuff like that. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So on this blog post written on 2017 by Amir Raudat on the Nginx official website. So according to this, one of the most useful features of Nginx is rate limiting. It allows us to limit the amount of HTTP requests a user can make in a given period of time. A request can be as simple as a GET request to the homepage of a website or a POST request on a login form. So that's the definition of what rate limiting is all about. Also rate limiting can be used for security purposes, for example slowing down brute force attacks and password guessing attacks and also it can help protect against DDoS attacks of course by limiting the incoming requests rate. But more generally, the rate limit is used to protect upstream application servers from being overwhelmed by too much user requests at the same time. So right now that we have a basic understanding of what rate limiting is all about, I'll jump into the codes and configurations that I've got over here on my GitHub repository where you can find the link down below if you want to follow along with the same configurations and same setup that I am in this video. So as you can see I've got a docker compose file which only has one service in it which is the Nginx that is using the official Nginx Alpine image. It has only one volume that is mounted to it which is the dot slash nginx.com file to the etc nginx nginx.com file inside the container and also there is a port map to the outside so we'll be able to access the server that is running inside the container which is the port that later will configure nginx to listen on so next moving to the nginx.com file over here I've got an HTTP block configuration for the rate limiting and also an upstream server which is an echo server that is listening on a defined port on my local machine. Basically it is an echo server that just echoes whatever request that it receives to the output. So if I want to show you this as you can see over here it just echoes whatever request that it receives. And also if you want to create an echo server for yourself, I've got an echo server directory in my GitHub repository containing a docker compose file and all you'll need is just say docker compose off-d in the exact same directory that this file exists. So then your echo server will be up and running on your defined port over here. So moving back to the nginx.conf file, I've got a server block over here listening on the exact same port that we mapped to the outside the container and over here I've got only one location which is slash also with the rate limiting configuration which I'll describe right away and over here I've got a proxy pass to the app upstream over here which will actually resolve to the echo server running on my local machine. So as you can see over here on the rate limiting configuration, the thing that I've done over here is to define a zone for the rate limiting based on the binary remote address, which is exactly the IP address of the clients that are making the request passed through the Nginx web server. And over here I'm defining a zone, naming it to limit and declaring a 10 megabyte of size on the RAM that will be used for this zone. And also over here I'm defining the rate which is 
three requests per minute. Of course, this is very low, but for the demonstration purposes, I've set it to a low value. So I'll be getting the rate limit error after a few requests. And over here, I'm setting the stats code for the rate limit error that will be sent back to the client. So with defining my rate limit rules, on the slash location, I'm defining which rate limit rule to be applied to this location. As you can see, I'm setting the zone to the exact same name that I've set over here and some other configurations that I'll describe later in this video. So in order to test the very basic setup of rate limiting on Nginx configuration files, I'll move to the terminal, I'll hit LS, to make sure I'm in the exact same directory where my docker compose and nginx.com file exists. The command that I'll hit is say docker compose up dash D to spin up my container, which holds the nginx web server. So if I say docker compose PS, as you can see a container has been created by the very docker compose file over here. The state is up and it is listening on my defined port. Also by saying docker compose logs, I'll be able to see through the logs of the services that are created also by this docker compose file over here. So my Nginx server is up and running with the basic rate limit rules applied to it. So if I go to the browser on the exact same port that the Nginx is listening on, I'll hit refresh many times. And as you can see, after a few refreshes, I'm getting the 429 too many requests error. So the rate limit rules have been applied successfully and working correctly. So the thing that happened over here is that my IP address has made more requests than the defined rate through the Nginx to the slash location. So Nginx decided to block my requests based on the rules that I've defined on the slash location. So next I'll move to the blog post over here, scroll down a bit. So over here, as you can see, by using a picture, it is trying to describe the behavior of rate limiting. So as you saw in my configuration over here, I've set the burst to six and a no delay configuration over here. So, so what do these mean? So the delay parameter defines the point at which within the burst size, excessive requests are throttled or delayed to comply with the defined rate limit. So supposing that we set the rate to 5 requests per second, burst to 12 and delay to 8 and over here we've got the seconds, this is the beginning of requests, this is the second one, second two and second three and each second eight requests are coming to the nginx server so supposing we set the burst to 12 nginx will just ignore the five requests per second over here and will just allow all eight requests that is received in the second one also without any delay but in the second two as we can see also eight requests are received the first request will add up to the seven requests received on the second one to make the delay size and they will just pass through without any delay but the next four requests will be delayed because it just exceeds the delay count that we defined over here and the next three requests are ignored because from now on nginx will try to apply the five requests per second rule also in the second three five requests are delayed and the rest of the requests are also ignored also because of the five requests per second so i hope you get the idea i'll just leave this link on the description section down below and i recommend you read all this blog post which gives us a really good information about the rate limiting built in inside the nginx web server so as the last point in this video i'm going to show you guys how to ignore some specific IP addresses or IP ranges for the rate limiting rules. So like for example, suppose your development team is also using the same endpoints as your production 
and because they are making more requests per second they need all their requests to be allowed through the nginx so i'll just comment out this and then comment these configurations over here so over here i've got a geo block which is one way to set variables in nginx configuration so i'm defining the dollar limit over here the default value will be one but if the value is on this ip range or this ip range the value will be equal to zero and also over here i've got a map block which maps the dollar limit to dollar limit key so it'll check if the dollar limit is equal to zero it'll set the dollar limit key to an empty string but if the dollar limit is one it'll set the dollar limit key to the dollar binary remote address which is as i mentioned is the ip address of the client so by doing this we can set the rate limit rule over here and pass in the dollar limit key so we'll be able to have dynamic rate limit rules over here so if the value for this is an empty string the rate limit rules will be ignored of course because the client's ip is at this range or this range defined over here so because my local machine's ip address is defined on this range i'm expecting nginx to allow all my requests and ignore this three requests per minute rule over here so i'll move to the terminal hit ctrl c to stop the previous server by hitting docker compose down and docker compose up dash t again the nginx container will be destroyed and recreated with the new configurations so if i go to chrome try to make requests and as you can see how many requests i make the nginx web server will allow all my requests so right now with this configuration any ip addresses out of the range that is defined on the configuration files will be evaluated by the rate limit rules and yet we have some ignore lists for the rate limit rules so that's all for this video i hope you learned something new in this one if you have any questions, any recommendations, I'll be happy to see your comments on the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to watch other videos on my channel and also this Nginx playlist where I've got videos about other features that Nginx provides us and also other videos about other cool technologies. So don't forget to like and subscribe and with that, I hope to see you in the next videos.